Brazza, the city bird SUV. Well, new season, new captain with the same old Super Kings. They continue their impressive run against the Royal Challengers Bangalore. The defending champions are up and running and they're on the board in IPL 2024. It got slightly tricky at some point in that chase, but 176 with eight balls to spare. You'll be pretty happy if you're Ruturaj Gaikwad on your captaincy debut for the franchise. So we look back at uh, the game that kickstarts this season on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for Timeout. Mitchell McClanagan, Wasim Jaffer, and Tom Moody. Same old Tom Moody getting these predictions so, so right. 19th over is what he said. I'll give you the two ball concession. But can we say that was a safe and comfortable win for the Super Kings? Yeah, I think it, it always felt like they had it under control. Um, yeah, you could argue there may have been some periods where there was a bit of a flutter. But it, it, what it did highlight is the fact that RCB didn't have the firepower uh, and the variety in the attack to take advantage of potential opportunities in the middle phase of the game. And, um, you know, I just can't help but think of the Hasaranga release and what he may have done in that situation if he was given the ball in those middle overs to be able to shift the game when the game slightly leaves the door mm. open. But, you know, when, when the door was slightly open, it was closed pretty quickly because they didn't have the firepower. Your mind goes to Hasaranga last season. I keep going further back to Vendra Chahal. Well, there, there's a another one. Seasons. Well, that's, that's a classic one, isn't it? Yeah. And that's, that's a... That's a given because that's an Indian talent, mm -hmm. you know, and they're, they're like gold dust. Yeah. Is that something that strikes you first? Like for Tom, it's RCB had an opening, but they didn't have the bowling. What's your first emotion or impression as to where this game was decided? Was it? I think they just went in the middle phase trying to bowl short balls mm -hmm. uh, to Shivam Dubai, which looked like he had some trouble with. Uh, but then again, that wasn't a wicket-taking option. Mm -hmm. uh, Mang Dagar bowled a couple of overs for six runs and they didn't, you know, had another opportunity at him, even though Shivam Dubey could have got out. You never know. Uh, Ravindra Jadeja might not have taken him on, uh, but that's the punt uh, which Fab didn't take. So mm -hmm. I thought, and again, Karan Sharma was out of the attack straight away after a couple of overs, and there was no spin in between to trouble or, or take wickets. Yeah, I, I, at this point, please send in your questions and comments as well uh, on our YouTube live if you're watching there, uh, because I've already got some good ones and I will take them for the panel in just a little while from now. Washi mentions the short ball. It's the mm. first game, but we saw evidence of that in the second innings more, the extensive use of the new rule of two bounces per over. Yeah, and it, it showed that you've got T20 players who haven't used that rule uh, before. The, the accuracy of it was was a little bit out. So, um, look, I didn't mind it to Shivam Dubey. I, I felt like it was a wicket-taking option to him, but they needed to change the field. and. Quite often when uh, a guy doesn't lap against spin, you take the short fine leg out, you bring him into mid-wicket, mm -hmm. uh, Dubey's never going to lap. So you could have moved that guy there or brought someone from the offside across to, to get that sticker ball yeah. into a catching position. So tactically, that might be a shift that we might see or change, a fielding change we might see from teams in the future. Yeah, did I also just see Siraj bowling short to Rachin Ravindran? And so no one, no one back, or was that just me? Yeah, which is, to be honest, mate, uh, that is... Absolutely the wrong plan to Ratan Ravindra. We've seen in the World Cup, Mark Wood bowling 155k, he t pulls him off his nose. Anything leg side to Ratan Ravindra with pace on, he's going to take you down and it's, that's what we saw tonight. Did they seem tactically undercooked, RCB? We'll come to CSK, very impressive. But did RCB almost make Matt life easy for them today in both innings? No, I, I thought they, their, their tactics were pretty sound, but their execution was poor. Um, you know, they brought on the, you know, Maxwell when the two left-handers were at the crease. They bowled short to Dubai, which was the right tactic. So the, the tactics were there, but the execution wasn't quite, quite right. And, you know, Duggar only bowling two overs. Again, I think at times we get, we get stuck in our head thinking, oh, it's not the matchup. You know, left-hand batter, left-arm orthodox spinner is not the matchup. We'll take him out of the attack now. Instead of embracing it and, and going like an MS Stoney route and just backing mm. his bowler. You know, he'd never not bowl Mo and Ali to a right-hander if it's mm. not, a, not the right matchup. Mm. He'd back his bowler to be able to navigate that situation. I'm going to take some questions now coming on our YouTube live. So fire them in if, uh, if you're interested. 
in what just went down and RCB and CSK are two franchises that trigger a lot of conversation. Uh, this one's from Satvik and I think it, it will send us back many years for RCB. Just assume that you'll need 20, 30 extra runs every time and that's how their batters need to think for RCB. He's also thrown another suggestion in this overseas combination with Faf, Maxwell and Green. Instead of playing Joseph or Lockie, maybe just go all out with the Indian seamers and even play Will Jacks. Oh, look, I, I think it's, you know, we spoke about a pre-show. I think loading the batting has never worked for them. So I think they, they need to bite the bullet, whether it's Faf, who's in great form, look good tonight, um, maybe leaving Cameron Green out um, to play those, maybe a top Lee and a Lockie Ferguson as a combination because you don't always want to be having to score that extra 20 or 30 runs. Uh, you, you need to, to back some quality bowlers and I just think they need a change attack. I know it's the first game, uh, but I feel like they, they've got the squad to be able to play with two overseas fast bowlers. Did they start with the right first overseas fast bowler though? When you mentioned Topley and Lockie Ferguson, Alzari Joseph, a lot of money paid for him. Is that the right man to start? Yeah, to be honest with you, I don't think the money counts for anything. Um, it, it's about what you need in that situation against that opponent in those conditions. You know, we, we had differing opinions on who that one overseas bowler should have been. Uh, all three are good options. My personal view was Topley. Uh, I just like the fact that you know, he can swing the ball early. He's got a good record in power play, taking wickets. And I like the fact that the angle across right-handers with his mm. cutters can be quite difficult at the back end of the innings. Um, you know, to me, RCB even thinking about changing their overseas combination at this stage, it, it shows that their whole thinking, not that they're going to be doing that, but it shows their whole thinking around their strategy around the auction was completely wrong and around the trade window was green. completely wrong. Mm. You know, if they felt that they needed to shift the way they play by playing two specialist overseas bowlers and recruiting accordingly, well, you know, what, why would you take the trade on green? Why yeah. wouldn't you keep the yeah. 7.5 crore in your pocket? 17, yes. 17, I, did yeah, I say 7, did I? Yeah, so yeah. I missed just 10 crore. Yeah. <laughs> just, but, yeah, have that in your pocket so you can fire all your guns blazing at the auction to get that combination, which mm. is a shift, complete shift, in the way you approach the game. Yeah, you know, it could be one of the great things to have, to look back on because that 17.5 crore trade also allowed Mumbai to execute their trade. Yeah, Otherwise, it could have been a different season. Early days, one game, but you are, you would be thinking on those lines if you're an RCB fan. This question from Sanket Patel. Where should Virat bat considering the World Cup? Was he? We know he's going to bat at three if he plays for India at the World Cup. Yeah, I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Uh, I mean... Cameron Green, we, we spoke about that uh, he should have batted at three. Uh, they've started uh, the batting order pretty, you know, wrong in our opinion. He should have batted three. Virat, uh, you know, has batted at number three for most of his career. Uh, so, it doesn't make a difference. I think what they need to do is probably get Cameron Green to bat at three and then see what the situation is and then use Glenn Maxwell and Patida. Uh, again, going back to Mitch. Uh, about the combination, if if Cameron Green goes out, I don't see many Indian players, you know, fill in that spot. Even though the batting looks good at the top four, mm. but they haven't got that firepower to score those big runs. So, you know, they are in the dilemma, you know, from the first game itself. Yeah, it's a tough tournament. Uh, it's a long tournament, so they'd be hoping that they fix this. But it's time for something new now on uh, our post show. Uh, time is of the essence these days. So why don't we? Quickly recap this game in our rapid fire review. So, all set. Tom, Mitch, and Wasid. Drill is I'll, I'll fire five questions to the three of you collectively, and you have to respond in 20 seconds or less. You'll have a timer. If you have some time left, you could pass it on, like Parliament almost. Yeah. <laughs> but, but slightly less boring than that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, let's get our, to our rapid fire review. Uh, Mitch, for you first up, has Rachin Ravindra already shown that Chennai have a way without Conway? Your 20 seconds start now. Absolutely, they have. They've shown straight away and they've shown that the strategy they had at the auction was absolutely right. They picked Ratchet Mavindra as a backup for Conway and it's just fallen in their lap. Oh, brilliant. Ten seconds. Anyone wants to add? Mm. I, I, think I, I agree. Okay. <laughs> That's another two seconds. And as well, give, give them another option, even they didn't use it, but Take I think it's a good buy. All right, absolutely. Uh, Tom Moody, is this Bangalore's best batting order? Your 20 seconds start now. 
No, I don't think it is. Uh, as we've talked about and debated quite uh, heavily, Green, I think, needs to bat three, Padada four, Match four, five, depending on the combination, uh, sorry, depending on how they start up front, you can then move Maxwell into the uh, fold a lot earlier. But mm. to me, they need to shift that quickly. Okay, it was nice. Mitch actually gave you his balance time. Mm. So you have plenty of time. You could thank him. There's a lot of love for the two of you. Yeah, we'll get him on the right. It's yeah, first day. It's working. <laughs> 60 days ago. <laughs> Wasim Jafar, why did Bangalore pick Yash Dayal as the impact sub ahead of Akash Deep and Vishak Vijay Kumar? I think they could have picked Akash Deep probably to bowl with the new ball, somebody to try and swing the ball and get wickets early on. Uh, and I thought he bowled well, just got his line wrong a little bit because of the left hand right hand combination. Uh, but mainly because uh, you know he could swing the ball and, and get wickets up early. Mitch Mustafa Zurema, four wickets. Can we expect to see a lot more of Fizz even when Pathirana is back, especially at home? Yeah, huge call. Look, he's got off to a great start. He's put his hand up. He's a high-quality player. A lot of experience at a young age. So he could do if he's hot. I think you keep him trotting along. Uh, but otherwise, this Pande, I didn't think the, the runs reflect his performance at the death. I thought he bowled well. So you may not need that extra death bowler. And speaking of death bowling, Tom, 71 still conceded by Chennai in the last five. Is that bowling going to be a concern for them this season, your 22nd start now? Uh, it will be a concern, but it was a concern last year as well. Uh, it was something that we talked about quite regularly last season, that uh, you know somehow MS Dhoni managed to navigate and get through uh, that situation. Patharana was really important uh, in that whole situation. So I think uh, it will be something they're very aware of and they'll have to continue to work with because they don't have an ideal finishing bowling group. Hmm. All right, that's a nice little rapid fire and more questions are coming our panel's way. So let's take them as we as I look at this one from Mohammad Rail. Shouldn't they play Shardul Thakur ahead of Desh Pande? Even though they're on the winning side, I was a bit surprised that we didn't see Shardul Thakur assuming he's fit, was he? I mean, it's a tempting one, uh, but I, I think they have gone uh, with a guy who has performed well last season. Uh, and that's the continuity we talk about CSK. So they'll give him a lot of game time before they make a change. Mm. Karthik says Akashdeep and Siraj are very similar bowlers. That's why they picked Dayal. Can I think they picked that? Dayal because they saw how well Mushtaf Azur bowled um, in those conditions and they didn't have that left arm option. So they probably read a little bit too much into how Mushtaf Azur bowled in that first inning. Mm. Uh, Abhishek Barthur. Do you think Green's batting position is not ideal? Tom, you've touched upon this. We could perhaps get a bit deeper. Given he's more a top-order player, can he bat at three? But how does that affect the rest of that batting? Absolutely, he can bat three. Um, he showed that last year at Mumbai Indians, having a very good return at three. High strike rate, high average. Um, he's ideally a, a batter that needs to come in with pace on the ball. You know, At number five, more often than not, he's going to come in when spins bowling and he'll take longer to get set in that situation. So I think that move is an important move to consider for RCB. Mm, this is from Bhattarai. Uh, what could RCB's tactics at home be? Will the short ball and hard length pay off here? There's another question there from Abhishek which says, early days, but did RCB seem like they overdid the short ball to no avail? So is this going to be a plan they're going to take back home to the Chinnaswamy? Yeah, good question. I think just because it was... Dubai on strike a majority of the time when they were doing that short ball plan. It may have looked like they were overdoing it, but we know he's not very strong on the short ball. So, look, I think it's going to come down to horses for courses. They're going to have tactics for certain players. And, and when you do get a player that, weeks, that is weak on the short ball, expect them to, to really go with that plan again. But, but just on that, the, the art of bowling the short ball well is is not being predictable with it. And I thought tonight they were very predictable yeah. with that plan. Yes, yeah. Dubai has got a potential area, grey area when it comes to the short ball, but you've got to use it as a surprise. You can't use it nearly every single ball. It was nearly like every ball he faced against the pace bowlers was short. Whenever When he first came to the crease, what did they do? They did the right thing, bring Joseph back into the attack, their fastest bowler. But again, he, be, he became predictable bowling short all the time because he'd still put away a few boundaries. Mm with that short ball. And on top of that, they didn't have that field position as well where the ball popped yes. a few times. So they could have gone with mid-wicket up and then 100%. challenged him to yeah. hit over. Mm. Satya Narayan for Wasim. 
Should Kohli play with a more attacking mindset? It's almost the standard question. Now, 21 of 20, but we saw wickets fall around them. Forget matches, though. Would you like to see Kohli play a certain way, given what we've been thinking of how Kohli would play given the World Cup? No, I think today he only faced six balls in the power play. Yes. Uh, and generally, he goes really hard in the, in the power play. That, that's been his pattern. And then he slows down a little bit when the spin is on. Uh, I think he'll, he'll play the way he played last season. We talked about it. He uh, had a strike rate of 140. In his career, uh, he's averaging uh, 50 plus mm. in T20s and, and strike rate of 140. So I don't, I don't know why we talk so much about <laughs> it. Somebody who's a modern great and he's done it time and time again in situations. Uh, even in the last T20 World Cup, he averaged 90 plus, average uh, strike rate of 140. And we talk about him time and again. Yeah, well, what to do now? <laughs> These people don't learn only. Learn something now. Uh, let's talk about the biggest positives for CSK, though. If you were Stephen Fleming today, and all that's happened in 24 hours, uh, Guy Quad, there would have been some nerves. Is that the biggest win today, that Rutharaj Guy Quad has got the result on his name? Whatever we could see of how he handled the first 20 overs as captain, it did seem to sort of come into his batting, if I could say that. Correct me. I, I thought it was a critical win for CSK, given mm. what's happened in the last 24 hours. Uh, if they lost that game, we'd be having a completely different conversation around the fact that it's been quite disruptive. You know, this sudden, you know, change of captaincy, you know, uh, Guy Quad suddenly thrown, you know, this, you know, very challenging role in captaining an IPL side. Uh, we all know that it's a very difficult role, um, along with coaching, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, but I think uh, uh, CSK will grow uh, uh, grow a foot in confidence after today, and again the story will continue for them to just build on this confidence. Particularly at home, they they seem to be able to you know navigate wins from any situation there. Well, I think the most important thing out of today was that their three new recruits actually performed. Rachma Vindra. Daryl Mitchell got a good crack, a couple of good sixes in the middle to keep the innings going, and then Mushta Fazur. So any, got, any team that has new players come in, you want them to perform straight away, and they settled nicely. Yeah, I think the Ravindra one, yes. Muscle, the only please. difference I, I saw in the captaincy was, uh, you know, even if they lose the power play in the, in the bowling, uh, you know, they choke the opposite side with spin in the middle overs, which we didn't see. Uh, and very rarely when MS Dhoni captains, he uses five bowlers. He generally uses six, mm. even seven. So that was a significant change that I saw. We, he didn't choke uh, Rituraj, didn't choke the opposite team with, with spin a uh, lot more. So that something was, was a major difference. Rotten Ramandra seems like this cool dude who can do no wrong when he comes to India. Uh, he defies logic when he's thrown to open in a World Cup. He doesn't have the T20 numbers like we've shown. That innings today. What well, can you tell us more about how this perhaps shouldn't surprise us, even though the numbers would suggest this is a big ask? IPL is different, isn't it? Oh, the pressure of it is, absolutely. Uh, I think that World Cup put him in good stead in front of big crowds and he performed nicely. Uh, look, he's, he's, what I must say about him is from a very young age, he's very Indian in, in his style of practice. He's hit a lot of balls. Um, he's very well prepared. He knows his game well. And, and tonight I feel like RCB bowled to his strength. Yep, sometimes your strength can be your weakness, uh, but then you've got to have the fielders in the right place to take advantage of that. And, and bowling straight with pace on to Ratcham Avindra is, is not the way to go. Mm. Now, Srivat Chava watching on our YouTube live, spin bowling is a concern for RCB. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. Um, there's no question of that. And it surprises me when, when, it, when it comes to recruiting that that's not a high priority because you only have to look at the, the, the greatest wicket takers in IPL history yeah. and look at the top 10 and it's, it is absolutely crowded with spinners. Mm. So that's telling you something that they're a pretty important part of your balance of your playing 11 and your squad. So you not only need one very good spinner, you need a couple of very good spinners. Yeah. And we've talked about just, you know, just five minutes ago about Shahal, and now Hasaranga. at Rajasthan and Hasaranga only got one bid. You know, they didn't even get a Sunrisers didn't, didn't even get a matching didn't even get a matching bid on Hasaranga. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he's ranked, you know, I think second at the moment in the ICC rankings yeah. in T twenty cricket. And funny enough, that may be the team that might find it hardest to play, but that's yeah. a position yeah. for another day. 
he could have easily played for Al Zari. Can you do this season trades? <laughs> yeah, not yet. We're not yet. Not yet. yet. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, keep the questions and and comments coming. But it is now time to evaluate the performances of the players as well as the predictions of our pundits in our impact zone. Okay, first up, let's have a look at the players that have the maximum impact in this game, looking at Cricket Force Smart Stats, which is, of course, a way that gives us a more accurate uh, idea of uh, contributions in T20 cricket. It's not just the conventional stats. Win contributions, as per Cricket Force Smart Stats, Mustafa Zurehman right up there, 36%. Rachin Ravindra is second. Ravindra Jadeja follows. And Fizz has also been awarded player of the match. Rightly so. Fair enough. Mitch McClanagan? Absolutely. Any time a, a left armer takes one or two wickets, he should be in the frame for <laughs> man of the match. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did you ever feel like there were days that you did more than some of the others and the player of the match went to a batter or someone who did, who had to work a lot less hard? Oh, absolutely. A bowler <laughs> sit-up games. You know. Hang that on, is just, just, I'll, just, I'll just brush this chip <laughs> off his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, that is just the icing on the top, mate. No, look, he was, he was class. Um, Absolutely deserve that, and I'm tough for him. Mm. All right. Uh, easy call, then. It goes to Mustafa Zurehman. Is another big box ticked. Because he's, he's not necessarily at the same impact after that great season when he was at Sunrisers. Now, he went to Mumbai Indians. It didn't quite work. He's had his share of injuries. Can we see almost a second coming of the phase in the IPL? Look, I hope so. Uh, when he was at his very best, that was pre-shoulder surgery. Yes. Uh, and that's when he had his slower ball at its absolute best and no one could pick it. It was near on impossible. And that was the thing that you know, rang the alarm bell when we recruited him. We just thought, wow, OK, this guy's very different mm -hmm. and no one's picking this slower ball. He's got decent ball speed and he can swing it. So there's a lot going for him, even though that it was potentially a bit of a gamble. But, uh, you know, when you have that sort of uniqueness, you, you've got to buy into it. And... He then had the surgery about two years after, I think it might have been, maybe been three mm. years after, and he'd struggled to get that same ball speed and that slower ball back again. But he looks like he's, you know, getting yeah. back on track, which is yeah, great. Yeah, good tonight. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, most of us are a quality bowler, lost his way with injury. But if he's back, that augurs well for CSK, who are with Patirana for some time. Uh, and uh, before I move on to that, uh, I've got a couple of questions on Ruturaj. Let me quickly take those as well. Uh, he, Ruturaj says Arun Prasad giving Cheher another over after he had gone for 24 of his first two and then getting the wicket of Maxi first ball. Turning point. I wonder what you make of that. Was he? Yeah, I think that was a good move. Even Mustafi's bowled one over and then I think he was taken off and then he came back again and picked another two. Uh, so, yeah, that was the strategy they did. Uh, and because they got wicket in, you know, two wickets straight away. I thought that was a good move. Mm, okay. Uh, now, let's uh, evaluate, the, evaluate the performance of the winning members of the new captain. How about the performance of Tom, Mitch and Wasim? We started something new this season. It'll be a recurring theme. We ask our uh, panel to pick players that they think will have the maximum impact. And they pick one batter, one bowler, one all-rounder. They cannot repeat. That's the scorecard after day one. Look who's on top. 166.4. Rachin Ravindran and Deepak Chair yeah. getting some points. And Cameron Green, some handy points with ball. Uh, we might change a rule or two tomorrow about starting with the all-rounders. But uh, a respectable second is Mitch McClanagan with 92. And Wasim Jafar. Not a bad selection. Kohli and Daryl Mitchell expected mm. to do better. Karan Sharma. Picked the wicket, but yeah. Then ball is four overs. Yeah, Tom, you knew all along, didn't you? You're going to win this. Oh, look, it's, you know, I, I just feel a bit embarrassed, really. It's sort of <laughs> a daylight, really, isn't it, between first and second. But, yeah, no, begin, beginner's luck. Okay, that's where we call it time. <laughs> uh, good game, this, for the Super Kings. Lots to think about for RCB, but it is a long season, like we mentioned. It's a big thank you to Tom Moody, Mitchell McClanagan and Wasim Jaffer. We have to be back bright and early, boys. It's already half past midnight. We have a double header coming our way, the return of Rishabh Pant headlines. Delhi against Punjab at a new ground in Mullapur. So we look forward to your company then. Three o'clock, if you're in our part of the world, is when we build up to uh, that game. So join us then for Maruti Suzuki Arena Presents ESPN Quick Info Timer. Do download the mobile app. If you haven't already, it'll keep you covered with everything that's happening.
from the IPL as well as the world of cricket. We will see you on the first double header of IPL 2024. Bye-bye. All new hot and techy breast up, the city bird SUV.